Hi everybody, today I'm answering some viewers' questions again. And a question I'm getting asked quite often about our South African anglers is, please show us a basic cob trace. Now as you're all aware, fishing for cob in South Africa is one of the, one of the big things we do in angling. It's something everybody wants to do. When you're down on holiday and you're at the coast, your dream is to land a cob. Um, sometimes it's easy to catch them, and sometimes it gets very, very tricky and very hard to catch them. So, with the viewers asking me about the traces, I thought I'll show you guys a basic trace because often we overthink these things and we try and make it too difficult. And especially the guys that don't fish it often, they haven't got time to sit and make all these fancy traces and spend hours on the beach experimenting with things. So today I'm going to show you the two basic cob traces that will work for you. And if you build the right bait on it, you should get a cob. We do have a variety of cob baits which we've made over the years. So go back, look at our videos, go study those videos and find the bait that will work for you in your area to target cob. So let's go through what you're going to need for your basic cob trace. Obviously your sinker, you're going to have your hooks. If you prefer a circle hook, you're going to fish your circle hook. If you prefer a J hook, you're going to have your J hooks, your swivels, your good quality nylon, fluorocarbon or a good nylon, and then it's your scissors and your knives to make the rest of the trace. I'm going to start off by talking about the type of sinker to use for targeting cob. Now that's one area where I'm quite fussy is the sinker I use when I'm fishing for cob. Especially when I'm fishing the Eastern Cape area in the clean water and the, in the still water. I don't specifically like using a grapnel sinker. Um, what I found over the years that if you're fishing for cob with a grapnel, they often grab your bait and start pulling it and as soon as they feel resistance, they'll let it go. Whereas if you're fishing with a cone or a sinker that can move and doesn't give you that much resistance when they pick up the bait, your chances of hooking that fish is a bit easier. Obviously if you're fishing in a very strong sea and there's a strong sidewash and you're washing away, you're going to be forced to fish with a grapnel or a plastic grapnel. But wherever possible, try and fish with a sinker that doesn't give a lot of resistance. Um, especially when the fish grabs the hook and starts pulling at the bait. So that's just a little tip. Um, it definitely works for me and as far as possible I always try and use a cone or a teardrop when I'm targeting my cob. Right, so, and then your hook size, that varies um, to the size fish you're going to target. I think in South Africa I would say our average size cob are between 3 and 5 kilos. So it's, a cob's got a quite a big mouth, so you don't have to go too finesse on your hook size, but try not to go too big because that's going to influence the action of your bait in order and the presentation of your bait. So try and match your bait, the type of size of fish you're targeting, or, or find out from the locals what size fish are in the area at that sort of time of the year, and get everything in balance, and that also helps you to, to catch more fish. All right, so as I said, this is the basic gob trace, and I'm going to start off by doing the J hook one first. And a question I often get is, how long should your trace be? Most anglers have got their preferred length of a trace. I like my hook trace, or my hook snoot, to be about 600 or 700 mils long. So roughly about that big. That gives me a nice movement of the bait in order. It's not too short and stiff, which restricts the movement of the bait. And then I can also use the water where I'm casting to give my bait movement. So that's sort of 600, 700. It doesn't have to be exactly, you just sort of, I know it works for me and that's why I'm sticking to that. Cut that off. And then a three-way swivel, which I tie on, double figure of eight. Right, so on our three-way swivel, you've got your hook snoot, your hook trace coming down. You've got the other end of your swivel going to your leader and onto your reel. And then the third one will be going down to your sinker. Right, so then we grab a hook. A nice sharp hook with quite a thin gauge is always advisable. Targeting edible fish. A cob's not the type of fish that's going to open a hook easily. And if you do hook a big one, just set your drag looser, take your time and fight it. Because generally with a fish like a cob, it's got a nice mouth. If the hook's in somewhere on the jawbone, it won't fall out easily. So there's no need to pull it extremely hard, fight it softly. Right, so we put a hook on. I just like using a figure of eight knot, because 
it's strong and it's fast. Okay, so there's our hook snoot done from our swivel to our hook. And then the next step is to put on our sinker line. I don't cut my sinker line before I've tied on the swivel because I prefer my sinker line to be longer than my hook trace, my, my hook snoot. And the main reason for that is the casting. It just casts much better when I've got a bit of a longer sinker line. And if I want to clip my bait onto my sinker, it's obviously got to be longer than the hook snoot. So there it is there. And I'm gonna make it a little bit longer and cut it off there. And then we've got our sinker, which we tie on. And that's our first little basic cob trace done. So this is on a J-hook. You guys can see, sinker is a bit longer than the hook snoot. We've got our J-hook all going up to a three-way swivel and onto our trace. Now, often when, especially when it's finesse fishing and the fish are not feeding well, I like to fish with J-hook because then I can put my flotation onto the hook and I can build a nice looking little chocker bait or red eye bait or sardine bait around the hook and it just the presentation for me personally is just nicer on a j-hook um, i might be a bit old school when it comes to that but it works for me and i like fishing for cob generally with the j-hook right so that's our first one done and then the next one is going to be almost exactly the same but we're just going to put a circle hook at the end and um, there's a few differences so i'm quickly going to just cut off this hook use the same trace and do the circle hook and i'll explain a few differences to you So generally when we're fishing with a circle hook, we use a dingle to build our bait around. So the, the most important thing, or the most important difference between a J-hook trace and a circle hook trace would be the length of your sinker line. Um, it, you, if your dingle is quite long, you've got to adapt your length of your sinker line to your dingle in order for it to hang nicely when you're clipping it and casting it. So in general, fishing with a circle hook, your sinker line will be a bit longer or a bit further away from the hook than the normal J-hook trace. And that is basically the only big difference. So I've literally shortened on this specific trace, I've shortened this a little bit now in order for it to work out. Get my circle hook. And obviously you've got to snell your circle hook. There's many different snell knots, we've shown many um, over the last few years. The one that I like using if I want to make a quick knot is just a normal figure of eight over the shank. Do one, two, three loops over the like that, and literally push your tag in through the loops, lay it nicely, and then just, then you just take your pliers and just Locked in your figure of eight knot onto the shank of the hook. So that's a lazy way of doing it. It's strong, it doesn't break, so um, a lot of people don't like it because it's so simple, but sometimes simple works. So three figure of eights over the shank of the hook, and there it's done and dusted very quickly. All right, so that's it done. So we've got our dingle, dingle through the circle basically the same trace and then you can build your nice looking chocker bait or whatever bait you're fishing for for cob over your dingle the hooks exposed at the top of your bait and you've got your sinker clipped just makes the casting easier and as soon as it lands in the water single unclip and your bait presentation will be in the right side okay so as I say it's very very simple it's it's basic and basic often work so don't try and overthink it i think when it comes to fishing cob um out of my experience water reading number one is the most important 
read the water, find the right place to catch them. Speak to the locals, speak to the guys who fish every day. They know where those fish are, so that'll save you a lot of effort. Secondly, good quality bait. If you're fishing a chocker, good chocker. Sardine, fresh sardine. So get good quality bait, and then thirdly is your trace. I said the trace is not the most important thing in the world, but do the basics right, get the fresh bait in the right zone at the right time of the day, and you should get a cob.